Hello and welcome to another tutorial with Cancer and Pathology Society. Today we'll be discussing the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis. So we can tell from its name, the HPT axis consists of three key hormone secretory glands. The hypothalamus, which is anatomically located in the midline of the brain, inferior or below the thalamus, hence the name hypothalamus. The anterior pituitary gland, which is a very small sized gland also situated in the brain that sits inferior to the hypothalamus, below it again, and the thyroid gland located in the anterior neck, which means in front of the neck. The thyroid gland also kind of wraps around the trachea. Okay, so now that we've discussed the location of each of these glands, let's move on to their function in relation to the HPT axis. In terms of hormone production, it begins with the hypothalamus, which can detect low levels of the thyroid hormones in the bloodstream and produce the hormone TRH, thyrotropin releasing hormone, in response. TRH then travels down through the pituitary portal circulation into the anterior pituitary gland and it stimulates this gland to produce TSH, which stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. And as you can probably tell from its name, TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, then travels through the bloodstream to the thyroid gland and it binds to the thyroid hormones receptors on the thyroid gland to stimulate the production and release of the thyroid hormones T3 and T4. And these two hormones, T3 and T4, are really the key thyroid hormones that regulate many of our bodily functions. Uh, just a quick note here that T3 stands for triiodothyrosine, and that's because it has three iodines attached to it. T3 is more potent, which means we need a lower concentration of it to be effective. T4, on the other hand, stands for thyroxine, and it has four iodines attached to it. It is less potent, which explains why it's found at a higher concentration in our bloodstream. And both of these thyroid hormones have many functions, including increasing our basal metabolic rate, affecting growth, stimulating protein synthesis, increasing the effect of catecholamines, which are hormones such as dopamine and epinephrine, and they can also increase heart rate and contractility. So now going back to the axis, it is controlled by negative feedback which means if there's too much T3 or T4 in our bloodstream, this is then detected by the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary, which in turn inhibits the production of TRH and TSH. So now that we've covered the very basics of the HPT axis, let's have a go and try an easy exam question. Could you fill in the blanks? So to recap, the hypothalamus produces TRH, which then stimulates the anterior pituitary to produce TSH, which then travels through the bloodstream and stimulates the thyroid gland to produce T3 and T4. And the axis is controlled and maintained by negative feedback. Thank you so much for listening. In the next video, we'll look at the production of T3 and T4, and we'll also take a look at some thyroid histology. And finally, we'll look at some of the diseases that arise from thyroid dysfunction.